Today, we'll learn how to make this surprisingly easy black letter ring of fire in Procreate. And I'll share a few of my favorite secret tips along the way. If you want to use the specific brushes and templates that I'm using today, I put links to all of them in the description below, and they should pop up here in the video from time to time as I'm using them. We'll start by creating a new canvas. We'll tap the plus sign here, and I'm going to go with a 2000 by 3000 pixel canvas. I have a preset for that right here. To import the guides, all you have to do is go to the wrench here and then insert a file or a photo. Just because I know I have this already in an existing drawing, the one that I want to use, I am going to just grab it from the original drawing or the original piece of art that I made. So we'll back up to the gallery and I'm going to open up my little circle stack here. And let's just, this one on top looks great. I'm just going to duplicate this so that I preserve it here. And then I can tap and hold and that will let me move the layer around, right? You're probably familiar with that. But I can also grab this layer, go back to my gallery, go back to the main area, open up the artwork I was working on, paste it in, and now I have this cool template right here. Looks like it's upside down. That's okay, it's a circle, it'll work anyway. But here, fun trick that we can start out with is tapping on the little green, because I know I just want to rotate it 180 degrees, 180, and voila, it has been rotated. Next, I'm going to expand this template a little bit just so that it better fits the screen. And I'm leaving a little bit of room because I actually want to make these letters a little bit longer. I'm going to put this on a new layer and I'm going to use just a very flat kind of a, just like a studio pen. I've got a couple of examples here. Let's just use that one selected. And all I'm going to do here with a red color, just for fun, I'm going to draw another circle I'm not going to be super careful or anything like that because we can adjust it later. And as I hold, you can see it's connected it and it's basically formed an ellipse. It looks like a circle, but if I tap on the screen now, it's a perfect circle. I can size it roughly to where I want to be. That's probably too big, but let's just move it and then see where it lands up. Maybe we even shrink it just a smidge. It's probably not going to make any difference, but it's okay. All right. So now I've got my additional circle to give me one other level of guides. Before I jump in, this little this little line here between the blue and this dash line is one nib width according to how I size the guides. So let's back up now. Now we know we're gonna be working on a black background. So let's turn the background black by tapping on the background color there. I'm just gonna go all the way into that corner. But uh oh, we just figured out something. This is probably based on a JPEG image and so it's a white background. When I pick a color to use for the lettering, I want to be doing it on a black background just so that I can really get a feel for how the thing looks, right? So quick trick, if you've got an image here that's got on a white background and you'd like to make it black, very easily can just tap on the layer. Watch this, this is cool. And invert it. So there we go. Now we've got our design on a black background and very important next step. <laughs> Add a new layer for your lettering, otherwise you'll be drawing it right on the guides. Um, so make sure you add a new layer. Sometimes I add two just in case I do an accidental undo. I'm going to be working with brushes from a few of my different Procreate brush collections, but if you want a sample pack to give you everything you need to get started, including a circle template, you can head over to procreatepowerpack.com. But for now, I am going to start working with this is from my Marble Procreate brush set. It's within the Marble 2 set of that collection, and it's just the standard nib right here. Again, at 45 degrees. So I'm just going to select this. Now, the next step is I'm going to pick a color to use with my brush. I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to pick red. I'm going to go with this red here right on the left side. And you know what? Just to make this as easy as possible to follow along, I'm going to add this color palette into my little free bundle. So uh, you can download it and grab this color palette as well. So again, I'm selecting this red. We're going to click here on the canvas. Again, making sure we're on a new layer so we don't write on the guides because we're not going to want those as part of the final design, right? And then next step is I'm going to check the size of the brush. And what's handy about these guides is that because the brush is at 45 degrees, this line is at 45 degrees right here in the center. So as I mentioned, this area here is a nib width. I told you we'd come back to it. I can just draw a little line here and check the width of my brush as it compares to this little segment in here. If you're curious, 2000 by 3000 pixel canvas again, my brush size is 20%. The quote that I did in the original version of this was only through fire is a sword forged. I usually will start in kind of the bottom left corner direction. 
And I realized I could just start up here, but for some reason in my brain, I feel like I need to just rotate the canvas to feel like I'm doing this correctly. <laughs> so now I've pulled this corner into view. I'm just going to start roughly with that 45 degree line. I want the line that I start to work from to basically be straight up and down. It's okay if it's not 100% to the 10th of a degree or whatever. It's okay. We're creating art here. We're not computers or machines. So our line is nearly vertical. Let's start with our lettering. Starting up here and stop with that dotted line. That's where I'm going to pivot my line. If you watch my other video about the easy black letter alphabet, you should be familiar with this concept already. And then a diagonal line. And I'm going to do another diagonal line up here. And as I work, now I just gradually rotate the canvas a bit. That's how we get the letters to go around in a circle. So there's O. And I'm going to move quickly here because otherwise we'll be here for like 17 hours doing lettering. <laughs> just kidding. It doesn't actually take that long. So there's the N. Again, not being super careful or critical. And here's the L. Let's actually move it over a bit. See, we have the advantage of undo when we work in Procreate. Only. Okay. I'm going to keep pulling it down straight only through. But I'm not going too crazy with the A senders either. So now the H. Rotate the canvas. R. O is next. The glove again really helps with keeping those lines smooth and straight. Only through. Rotate a bit. G. Can you imagine now if I discovered I was writing on the layer with the template? It's so funny. Okay. Actually, that curved a little too much. I just want to keep it straight. Oh, there we go. You still accidentally get undoes anyway. <laughs> I know I could have just redone that one, but let's just keep it straight like that. Make the H a little taller. It can be really tempting to want to keep zooming out to take a look at the whole piece of art that you've been creating. Me personally, I just like to keep working, keeping the flow of what I'm writing only through Inevitably, you'll always almost forget what you're writing. <laughs> I made a really tall F there. I love those fun tall Fs. So you know what? Let's do a little, little ligaturization of the eye for fun. Only through fire. So ligature is meaning I just connected part of the F right into the eye. Through fire E. Now, anybody who's been in my classes knows how much I love the letter E. All of the cool stuff that you can do with it. Let's see. Maybe I'll just... I'm going to keep it straightish. Maybe a little further out. Only through fire. Just like that. Only through fire is... Did I get this right? Yeah, I almost forgot where I was. So it happens when you talk a lot while you're working. <laughs> is here... Let's just go like that. We won't go too crazy with the S, just like so. Is, and then A. Make sure it's almost vertical. I'm just using these lines in the guides that converge towards the center to help me with writing each of the letters. So if you can't tell, the letters are a little wider at the top than they are at the bottom. That's the key to pulling off the circle look. Where am I? Sword. Only through fire is a sword. I'm guessing you'll be speaking a lot less as you <laughs> make your little creation at home and you probably won't keep forgetting where you are. Only through fire is a sword. So W is next. A sword. Or key. 
moving. I'm going to go fast, but you take your time. So if my stuff starts to get just a little bit sloppy, that's okay. We are just having fun here. You can take your time. Go as quick or as calmly as you'd like. Sword. There's R. Sword. It's a little bit vertical. Come all the way there. And then the word forged. And you might have noticed that I didn't really talk about fitting this quote into this circle. That's okay. We're not going to worry about that. There are ways to do that, but we're not going to worry about that today. I would just want you to have fun and learn how to pull off this technique and just have fun creating. We can fit letters into things later. It can get a little bit complicated, but just have fun. Just try the technique. Don't worry about everything fitting perfectly. So I think we're on the word forge now. Let's just go ahead and throw that bit of the F. It's a sword forged. We're coming close to the end here. Forged. We'll see how much extra room we have, if if any at all. G. Oh man, this is going to be really close. How exciting. Let's redo that one. This is an E. So I'm going to keep the E consistent with the one I did last time. I'm not going to go crazy and start changing the E's with every letter. And the letter D. Looks like we have just a little bit of space here. So all I'm going to do is just fill it in with just an interesting stroke. Just like that. You know what, maybe, maybe we even just make it an eye. Give it, fill it in a little bit more. And just like that, we have created the base of our design. So let's go in here now and start to play around with some of the ends. So this is an L, don't need to change. So I'm gonna curve this like that to finish off the Y. Only through, that's a T. Just going to keep this simple, add a little line right there, only through. So here's the G, so I'm going to curve the line out that way. Now for the F, add a curve going this way for the top of the F. And I know that's an I here, so let's get the dot on the I. Here's another I, so let's, let's curve like that. So in this case, we'll curve it outwards this way. S. The fire is a sword forged F. So let's curve, let's actually pull it up a little. Let's curve it like that. So you know what? I'm just going to leave that F the way it is right there. The G. Let's curve this little part at the end here like that. So now we've got our basic design completed and let's go in and add some flourishes we'll one more time we'll add a new layer so plus sign the brush that i really enjoy doing flourishes with is from the magical collection and it's this crackle brush it's a really fun brush that creates a lot of magical effects as you write the lines but you could absolutely within the default procreate set go to the luminance and use this light pen works great as well. And you don't have to be too careful about the size here, but I'm going to shrink it a little bit. Let's try, let's try 25. And as I pull out, I can granularly impact the brush side more. So if I work here, it's really hard to zero in on a number, but if I pull to the right, now I can move much more easily in smaller steps. Let's just try 25. Maybe a little bit bigger. 27. All right, I like that size. So I went with 27 on the magic crackle brush and let's just start with this g there's a lot more room over here so when i think of creating a flourish that goes in this direction i i want it to start coming this way right so do you see why i curved this line in this direction now because if i treat this as my little flourish handle immediately i have the curve 
going in the right direction. So let's just draw a little flourish like that. And who knows, maybe a nice big one like that. So here's the Y. So let's add, and again, see, I knew there would be room on the right. So I curved it this way. So let's just go this direction. Who knows, maybe we'll just leave it like that. And it's okay to intersect with the letters. That'll give it a little bit more dimension. So here's with the G, and I want to curve it this way. So let's just keep this one small-ish. It said small and then it got big. That's fun. You know what, maybe for the F, I'm going to start by pushing harder and then just finish with a light, light touch. That makes the line go from thick to thin. Now this S, yeah, let's add something in here. That'd be, that'd be fun. So here, maybe I loop up through that R. Yeah, just like that. That's, that's pretty fun. In this case, maybe we go a little bit crazy with this one. What do you think? Those are some pretty fun flourishes. I like them. Let's, let's keep it at that. Now I want to add some more flourishes in the ascender areas here at the top. So let's just start here at the very top. See, and this is a great example of why we keep things on separate layers, because now I'm feeling like I actually want the top of this F to curve in the other direction. So it's real easy because I have them on separate layers. I can just come back to the layer where I had the tops of those letters. Just get rid of that. Go back to my other brush. Just go into the recents to find it more easily. And we'll go here. And and this time, let's curve it outward more, just like that. And I realize words are getting in the way now. We can get rid of those. Let's just grab the eraser, get rid of that text. We don't need it. Again, because it's on a different layer, I don't have to worry about erasing the stuff I'm working on. Back to our flourishes layer and the flourishing pen, which was crackle. And in this case, I'm going to go through the F. Again, as I'm creating the flourish, I'm just pushing harder in some spots lightening up the touch and others. So I, there's a lot of room here, so I kind of want to put some cool flourish in that direction. Let's use the, the little dot on the eye here. In this case, let's just go here. Maybe come up through the S. You can add as many of these as you want. Just have fun experimenting and playing. So for the F, let's curve this one. that. So let's zoom in and yeah, let's add, let's get real big here. Oof, that's fun. Oh yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I'm actually even thicken this one up a little bit to balance. Yeah, that got exciting. And you know what? We're going to leave it just like this for now. I know there's a couple of spots where it feels like we probably want to bounce things a little bit more, but that's going to get into the next trick. So for now, let's hide our guides. Now the circle's gone, the extra circle that we added with this cool black letter ring of fire. Now here's the biggest secret. So let's think about this for a second. To get to that original design, what do we need? We need three layers of lettering stacked on top of each other. And in the middle, they just get smaller and smaller and darker and darker. Well, we've already created one layer here, and this is digital art, so it's real easy to copy stuff. So I've already got layers with all my lettering. So I don't know what that, that's my, that was my extra layer just to be, just to be careful and be fun. Now I still want to preserve my original art, but here's, watch what we can do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all three layers, I'm going to group them, and then I'm going to duplicate the entire group. Quick tip, this can actually be a great way to add a little bit more brightness to your work just by duplicating it. But here's where things get fun. So first, I'm gonna pinch them together. That merges all of the artwork that we created, flourishes and all, into one layer. Now I'm just gonna grab this, pull this out of the group, remove the empty group that I don't need and collapse this one. So now I have all of my original layers protected and backed up, and I have a new layer with all of my art collected together. I'm going to make a copy of that by left swiping and duplicating just to have a preserved copy of the merged layer. Now remember, what we said we needed was three of these layered on top of each other. So because this is digital, here's an easy trick. 
And let's turn that original layer on. Now I have both layers on, the original merged version and the copy. And remember what we said we need. We need two additional copies of the original merged art on top of each other, the other two in the background a little bit smaller and a little bit more faded. That's what's going to give us that 3D vortex look. So all I have to do with the second copy selected is tap on the little move tool and now just shrink it down. And you, you don't have to be too precise with this, but we'll shrink it down just a bit, just like that. I think that looks good. And you know what? Let's make the opacity on this one a little bit lower just so that we can clearly see what we're working on. Okay, so I think that looks good, actually. Let's bring the opacity back. Now, here's another trick. It's pretty clear that this is a duplicate of the other layer. Well, what if I just rotate this one a bit? So I'm going to turn my magnetics on. And let's just rotate it around. And you remember how I was leaving some of those corners empty without flourishes? It's because now, as we rotate the art, some of, some of those flourishes in the outer edge, now they're going to fill in some of that space. Pretty cool, right? I think that looks good. And if the circles are at all misaligned, here's an easy way to check. Let's just lower the opacity of our original one. And then we can move the current layer again till it looks like things are pretty well lined up. Okay, and actually you can tell here we're creating a reverse vortex look, right? <laughs> but we're gonna stick with the original. So let's pull the opacity of this one back up. Maybe we even pull the opacity of this one down just to see how the effect is coming together. We're going to use a different technique in a second, but for now this helps us get there. And you can see it's already starting to come together. Now I'm going to duplicate that layer again. And I bet you can guess, we're just going to shrink it even more to get that third inner layer. And let's try to center it a bit and rotate. Let's just move it around just to be sure. You know what, just to make it much easier to see that center layer, I'm going to turn the original one off and I'm going to turn the opacity on the middle one back up. Now I can zoom in again and see how well centered the layers are. So I've got my smallest one selected. I think I'm actually need to move it over here a bit. Just like that, we have created our cool layered effect. Now I know what you're thinking. This doesn't quite look like the original, but we're going to fix that. First, let's bring all the layers to full opacity. Make sure we go. And let's duplicate that original one to have a completely preserved backup copy. You can even move it down in the stack just to make sure I don't accidentally edit it or do something to it. In fact, let's just label them so we're 100% clear which one's which. So this one is actually in the front. This one is in the middle. And this one is in the back. Okay, so let's reorder our layer stack to make sure each of the layers is in the right place. So middle goes under the front back goes under the middle. So now those are in the right place. Next, we need to push the middle and back layer into the background a bit. To do that, I'm going to create a layer on top of each of these. And we're just going to fill these layers with black. Let's start with the middle one. So this just covered up the middle layer completely. But what I can do is adjust the opacity of that black layer to make it more or less visible. Let's go with maybe around 60%. That looks good. And what that did is it applied itself to both the middle and the back, but I want the back to be pushed even further more. So let's grab this layer again, fill it with black and we're going to make this even less opaque. So now it's just, just barely visible. You can kind of see the stacks. Now this is where we can use one of my favorite tools, clipping masks. Let's start with the middle layer and push it behind the front layer a little bit more. I'm just going to hide the back layer for now. I'm going to add another layer on top of the middle one and I'm going to tap it 
turn it into a clipping mask. And now I'm gonna grab one of the ink spray brushes. There are ink spray brushes in every pack that I create. So let's just grab this ink spray one brush and using black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna imagine that there's a shadow being cast underneath the top layer. So as I move around this spot basically, or this area where the letters overlap and just start drawing with that ink spray brush, it'll start to add a little bit of separation between these two layers, pushing that middle layer further back and pulling the front layer further forward. So we just work our way around an entire area. And don't worry if it gets too dark. We can absolutely fix that. We're all, we're all about building flexible designs here that we can keep tweaking. So I like keeping stuff on different layers. So you can probably tell that really did start to separate those two layers. In fact, maybe we make that middle one a little bit more visible. So let's pull the opacity of the black layer to 50. That makes the middle layer more visible. And, you know, maybe we can add just a little bit of grunge there. A little bit more of the ink spray around the edges underneath the lettering just to separate it. But because it's it's not a solid brush, it's intended to kind of mimic an ink spray. Little bits of that middle layer will still will still show through. And here's where things get particularly powerful because we're using separate layers. You can just tap the opacity of this one and I can reduce that effect just a little bit. So let's go with 75. There, that looks good. And now that middle layer has been pushed back. We're gonna do the exact same thing with the back layer. New layer on top, clipping mask. Helps to turn the layer on. <laughs> and now, same black brush. Let's separate these two layers. Actually, in checking through these right now, I think I actually need to make the back layer a little bit smaller even. To make it show a little bit more. There we go. Maybe we even shrink the middle layer a bit. I felt like the layers were just a little bit too close. So I'm just going to tweak. Let's pull that middle layer in a bit too. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay, I think that looks good. And then let's just do a final adjustment to the center layer. Okay, there we go. So I think I'm happy with the repositioning now. And let's just revisit this shading layer. There we go. Now we can really start to push it back, separate too big. And don't be afraid to change the brush sizes and make some adjustments can actually make it look a little bit more interesting even. Let's darken that. Pull the opacity, maybe that's a little too much. Let's go for about 65 or 64. Maybe darken there. Now, now let's repeat the same thing for the, the back layer. So just as before, brush selected. Now for that back layer, let's push even hide the front layer. Yeah, the brush may be too big. Now let's start to hide that back layer a bit more. Just like that. Just working our way around. Creating a little bit of separation between these two. Just like that. Okay, let's bring back the front layer because it doesn't look too much of anything now. And we can again adjust the opacities a bit. Let's bring that back. Let's even make it a little bit more visible. Hopefully you're really seeing the power of working with the different layers. Now I can just make some adjustments and really just impact very specific things. You know what I can even do? Let's separate how dark the layers are 
just by making this a clipping mask as well. Now the back layer and the middle layer will have their own black overlays to keep them more or less visible. There we go. I kind of like that better. There we go. All right. I think it's starting to come together. Now let's make that front circle look extra cool. Let's really pull off that fire effect. And the great thing is we're going to stick with the same ink spray brush. So let's grab same ink spray brush. And now I'm going to pick a series of colors that take me from red basically to white or a very light yellow. So first up, we'll start with the orange. Same ink spray brush. We'll add a layer on top of the front. Make that a clipping mask. And now we're just going to start adding in some of this orange almost to the middle of the letters. And what's nice about that ink spray effect is that it kind of blends it in a little bit. Go down to the bottom of our letters. So it's not just a solid line. It doesn't apply it all in one spot. You just kind of get a bit of a... That's the magic of these ink spray brushes. And you could probably also try using one of the spray paint brushes within Procreate. That should do pretty well also. But these ones are just a little bit rougher. I like that they had a little bit more of a grungy look. Get those descenders too. Now we're going to add another clipping mask. One more layer on top. Turn it into a clipping mask. Now we go for a lighter color. So let's go maybe this yellow. And we'll just loosely paint over the ends again. See how this is starting to blend? Pretty cool, right? Pretty fun. So let's just work our way around here. And because those descenders are really close to the middle, I'm pretending that's going to be the hot spot for these. Just go through and keep applying the color until you're happy. You make it as light or as dark as you want. So maybe I even go back to the orange, grab my orange color from history, and make the letters a little bit more orange. Let's carry that through further into the letters, closer to the top. Just making them more orange. More orange. We're making them more orange. <laughs> more orange. All right. I think that's looking good. All right, it's coming along now. Let's go. Let's go for a really bright yellow now. Maybe that one. I may have just faked you out with the one that I selected. We'll do another clipping mask. Just stacking one color on top of another. So clipping mask. Couldn't even pick it correctly there. And we can, just like we talked about before, we can... Vary the size of the brush, get more, get areas that are a little bit more focused with the smaller brush as compared to with what the larger brush would do. All of these little changes, they just add a little bit of variance and light to your art. Okay, you keep working around. Maybe make it a little bit bigger again. Yeah, I kind of like that. Awesome. It's coming along. Now, finally, I wanted to blend this into the background a little bit more, too. So I'm going to grab another clipping mask. Let's go to our layers. New layer. Clipping mask. We're going to go back to black this time. Back to black. Grab a reasonable size brush. 8% looks good. And we're just going to work our way around the edges of the letters just to... It makes it look like it's fading in from the background. And you know we don't have to be too careful, right? Like we were just talking about. I can adjust the opacity of this little change as well. After we're done, make it more or less pronounced. I'm really just going after the tips. I don't want to cover them up too much just because 
I just want it to look like it's fading into the into the darkness around the edges. But I don't want to lose the entirety of the letters, right? I can now come back in here. Maybe make it a little bit more or less opaque. Yeah, sure, that looks good. Congratulations, you have created this awesome ring of fire in Procreate. Now it's your turn to give this a try, and I would love to see what you create. And if you want a little bit of an extra challenge, you can try to do this effect in reverse. So rather than all of the circles going down, kind of backwards and deep, try to layer them on top of each other and create an effect where they kind of stack one on top of the other. That could be a fun exercise to try to get these skills to really sink in and create a completely different design. Just a final reminder that you can get the free bundle with all of the resources you need to follow along today at procreatepowerpack.com. And all of the stuff that I use today is available in my shop at blacklettershop.com. Also, if you want to become a Procreate Color Genius and learn one of the most important concepts to working with both digital art and digital photography, you can check out this video that I released recently. And in the meantime, keep writing, keep playing, have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will see you next time.